we are all confronted with a constant story about the catastrophe that faces the planet, particularly on the carbon front. It is simpler and in some sense more immediately morally rewarding to reduce the complexity of planetary management to the need to reduce our so-called carbon footprint. But the plain truth of the matter is that a multitude of troubles beset us, both economically and environmentally. Peterson explores the rising costs and inefficiencies of the current energy infrastructure, shedding light on the economic and environmental consequences of its unsustainable trajectory. He offers insights into the systemic flaws contributing to the strain on resources and the need for innovative solutions. We therefore require people like Dr. Lomborg to think about many issues simultaneously to produce a plan and to help us move forward in the most beneficial manner possible. I would recommend that those of you who are truly interested in such things familiarize yourself with his work. You could start with The Smartest Targets in the World, which is a summary of the Copenhagen Consensus think tank's attempt to prioritize our action and attention in the world on the economic and environmental front. And with that, we'll turn our attention to the aforementioned Telegraph article and discuss how those who hypothetically lead us are failing to save the planet at this year's UN Climate Change Conference, known as COP27. Why 27? Because this is literally the 27th time that such a group has been convened. And as you will soon see or hear, very little has been accomplished and much time and money wasted in consequence. This state of affairs is unsurprising, unfortunately, because today's renewable energy sources have two big problems. First, they occupy a vast amount of space, often displacing nature. Replacing a square yard of gas-fired power plant requires 73 square yards of solar panels, 239 square yards of onshore wind turbines, or an astonishing 6,000 square yards of biomass. One study found that the United States would have to devote a land area four times the size of the United Kingdom to clean power to fulfill President Biden's promise of a carbon-free economy by 2050. Second, and of even greater importance, the two renewable energy technologies favored by the vast majority of environmental activists are intermittent or unreliable. Solar energy simply isn't produced when it's overcast or nighttime. Wind energy requires a breeze. We're often told by green energy boosters that wind and solar energy are cheaper than fossil fuels. At best, that is only true when the wind is blowing or the sun is shining. On a windless, dark night, the cost of wind and solar power rises to the infinite. It is for such reasons that it is deeply misleading, although highly convenient, to compare the energy costs of wind or solar to fossil fuels only when it is windy or sunny. It is also important to note that since all solar energy is sold at essentially the same time, when the sun is up and shining, its value drops dramatically. When solar reaches 30% market share in California, for example, as one study revealed, it loses two thirds of its value. Furthermore, because modern societies require 24 hours of nonstop power, backup is not optional. And that means reliance on fossil fuels when there's no sun or wind. As more sun and wind is introduced, more of fossil fuel backups become ever more expensive as they offer their services for fewer hours to produce the necessary return on capital. And what are batteries? Globally, we have battery storage with current capacity to store one minute and 15 seconds of the world's electricity consumption. And that problem will not be ameliorated soon. Even by 2030, global batteries will only cover less than 11 minutes of the global electricity consumption. And all of this just shows the problems with moving electricity away from fossil fuel. When Biden promises ambitiously that all of America's electricity will come from renewable sources by 2035, he is addressing the comparatively simple part of the climate challenge. Electricity constitutes just 19% of total energy use. We're far further behind in developing solutions for agriculture, manufacturing, construction, 
and transportation. Of these, the latter, transportation, is most often discussed by environmentalists and virtue signaling politicians who insist that the solution is already at hand, electric vehicles. Despite massive subsidies, however, just 1.4% of cars globally are electric, and that number is not rising quickly. The Biden administration itself estimates that battery electric cars will make up less than 10% of total U.S. automobile stock by 2050. The scenario for the entire world is that less than one-fifth of all global cars will be battery electric by 2050. We should remember as well that we simply do not yet have electric tractors or heavy trucks or airplanes or ships. And that means that all the fossil fuel infrastructure that allows such machinery to operate will have to stay intact for our supply chains to continue their current necessary operations. And our turbocharge on electric cars will produce very little impact on the climate. The International Energy Agency estimates that the world would produce 235 million fewer tons of carbon dioxide if we achieve all our ambitious stated transport electrification targets in this decade. The reduction will lower global temperatures by one ten thousandth of a degree Celsius by the end of the century, according to the UN's own climate panel's model. Failure, however, has not made politicians or the people they serve more careful or more adamant about searching for better solutions. Instead, they, we, have doubled down, making ever more ludicrous but emotionally attractive pledges, despite zero chance of either their implementation or their success if implemented, attempting to put forward the much heralded and off-trumpeted vision of a zero carbon dioxide emission world, whether by 2035 or 2050, would be so ruinously expensive that extensive gilets jaunes style riots, the kind we saw in Paris, are certain long before the goal is reached.